So here I am again uh, in vMix. Uh, I've got my stream running along quite nicely and oh no, one of my callers has just dropped off the call. It's alright though, because I'm prepared for this and I have a pip ready to move to. But the question is, is have I created one for every single possibility and every combination or is there a better way? So there is a better way using Companion 2.2 uh, and I'm going to show you how. Hi, I'm Matt and welcome to Crazy Logic. So if you've been doing vMix streaming and virtual events or hybrid events for any length of time, you'll know exactly this problem. You've got some speakers on your call, uh, you're sending them out to the stream and one of them drops off and you quickly have to, to move to something that's more suitable. This is a way of doing that that can save you a lot of time because you don't need to set up multiple combinations of uh of callers. It also makes everything else a lot easier once you know how to do this. So I have my sources in vMix. I've got my slides and I've got my four virtual persons. Um, I also have some PowerPoints, uh, one with one, one with two. This is pretty common. And then I also have my, my four up or four box, uh, three up, three box, two box, and then a single. So this is a pretty common four remote person uh, virtual event where you may have any number of people on at any time and they may or may not jump on alongside their slides. Uh, you just don't know what's going to happen. So the really important thing here is in all of my pips, there's consistent layering. So in this, uh, I'm always using layers one to four for the remote persons, and then I'm using uh, layer eight for the slides. So one, two for remote persons, and then layer eight for slides. Uh, it's important that that's consistent across all of your inputs. So let's talk about Companion. I'm using uh, Companion 2.2, and I've got Stream Deck XL down here. So this is how I've got it set up. It's pretty, pretty standard. So I've got my takes, or my inputs across the top on black, and then a big red button to take to screen. Um, they're set up as you normally would, just send input to preview, and then transition mix. And then all of these purple ones, are dynamic. These actions are actions that only exist in Companion 2.2 for the time being. Uh, and the actions are a bit of a mouthful. Set destination input for routable multi-view layer. Set destination layer for routable multi-view layer. And then set source input for routable multi-view layer. Um, and the way that this works is pretty simple. You select the input you want to work on, then you select the layer that you want, and then you select the input for that layer. So this is essentially doing the same as going into the settings, going into the multi-view layers, and then choosing what inputs you want on each layer. Let's do a live demo. So here is uh, a four up, and I'll put my three up on the preview. So there we go, there's the buttons. So the way that this might work is you've got your four person speaking, and one of those persons is about to drop off the call. Now you don't know which one it's gonna be. So I've already got a three up, and in that I've got red, yellow, and green. But let's assume that green has dropped off the call, and I need red, yellow, and blue. So I'm quickly going to call my three up to the preview. I'm going to select my three up to work on. I'm going to select my layer three, which is currently the Mr. Green. And then I'm going to choose my blue input. And then I'm going to take that to the stream. I have changed my input routing on my multi-view layers without going into vMix at all. And then say for instance that those uh, three, let's, uh, let's say that Mr. Red has dropped off the call. So I'm going to select my two up. I'm going to go select layer one, yellow, layer two, blue, and then take that to the screen. And then these two may wanna go to a PowerPoint. So again, in my PowerPoint, I'm gonna select my PowerPoint layer, or select my PowerPoint um, with the two up. I'm gonna select my layer one to be yellow and layer two to be blue, and then we can go to that. So I can quickly modify what's going where without going into vMix. I can do it all from these layer buttons I've got set up. So select the input that we wanna work on, select the layer that we wanna choose, and then select the input that we wanna to send to that layer. Uh, and that's pretty pretty simple. So you may notice I've got these question marks uh, here, these three question marks. The way that I have this set up is I've got my inputs that I have named them up here. So I use names, I don't use numbers in my vMix. And then on 15, I've got this question mark. So if we go into, into here, if we go to the question mark, you will see in the action, the destination input is zero. And then for this one, the destination input is minus one. They relate to the inputs of the current preview and the current program. So if I choose the first question mark, this one here, that will then allow me to edit layer one on the preview. And if I was to choose this one here, which is the one that sets a minus one, and then choose layer one, 
that allows me to change the one that's on the current program. You don't necessarily have to have an input for every input that you want to use. You could use your buttons and then always have it set to to use the preview window and then edit directly on the preview window. Or you could do it on the program window using these, these two buttons. You can also remove a layer. So say for instance, we are, we're on the two and we want to go to the one. And let's say on the one, we want to select layer one to be yellow. What we could do is we could go to our uh, program window, select our layer two, and then remove it. So the way that this works is that we have the, this button here is a set source input for root ball multi view layer, and it's none with a capital N. So that's the same as selecting none in the layers within vMix. So that's pretty much it, to be honest. Um, this is quite an easy way of quickly getting yourself out of trouble. And if you've got more than uh, four remote callers, say you've got eight coming in five vMix call, and then you've got slides, maybe someone in the room, you've got quite a lot of potential options available very quickly because you can just quickly select what you want, put what you want on each layer, take to screen. So it massively saves time if you have to edit these live. I hope this has been helpful. I will save my both my vMix file and also my companion layers. Um, so if you want to have a play with this, you can import it into vMix and companion and play around with it yourselves. So yeah, thanks for watching and I hope this has been useful.